Hi guys, Mrs M here. Super excited, we did it! Lemon Drizzle Challenge is over. 26 subscribers, get in! Well happy, as you can imagine. Thank you so much for all your help and your support. So, here it goes. You're going to get the legendary Murray Lemon Drizzle Cake. Let's get started. As always, wash our hands, warm soapy water. Let's look at the ingredients. Right guys, here we go. So we've got 180 grams of low fat spread, 180 grams of plain flour, which I've sifted into the bowl. We've got 180 grams of caster sugar. We've got two lemons, three eggs, which are gonna be beaten, and we're having one teaspoon of the baking powder. We're then gonna use demerara sugar, which is at the back, and that's to sprinkle on the top when it's all finished and out of the oven. Right, let's get started. Okay, so first off, we wanna start with our butter, and we're gonna cream that together with our sugar. Now because it's low fat spread, it's a lot easier to cream together because it's a lot softer shouldn't take too long, like so, there we go, right then what you want to do is you want to take your two eggs and you want to beat them lovingly like I always say. pretty much the same as if you were making a normal cake. So you'd add a little bit of your egg, give that a mix round. When it looks like it's trying to separate, keep going, don't panic. And then you want to add in a bit of your flour. Now I've already sifted my flour into the bowl. If you haven't and you want to sieve a bit of your flour in, And you just keep doing this until all of your egg and your flour have gone. I'm so, so pleased to be sharing this recipe with you. I had quite a few people ask for it. But like I said in the challenge, I was a little bit reluctant to give you this because this is my staple bake. I love a good lemon drizzle anyway. This is one that everyone seems to enjoy and I never seem to have a problem baking it. Touch wood, everybody. You watch it go wrong this time now, guaranteed. Right, so there we go, that's all our egg. Put the rest of our flour in. Keep mixing until it's all together. Making sure you scrape around the sides. Like so. There's that one. Right, now what we want to do, get these few bits away, is you want to add in there the zest of both your lemons. Now what I normally do is I just use my grater and I use this sort of bit on the grater and I just grate my lemon zest in. This is what it's going to give it, that lovely, lovely taste. Now you just want to grate the lemon until you start to see the white piffy bit. You don't want too much of that in it. 
because that's very, very bitter. So just keep working your way around until you've got all of your lemon in, like so, and then go to your next lemon. There's two lemons in this recipe. zested all the lemon now obviously if you've got a zester fantastic use that but at present I don't but it is my birthday coming up so you never know I might get treated right now you can see there's some already gone in the bowl but a lot of it gets stuck in your grater so you want to just scrape that all out too just like so just making sure you get it all out right you want to give that a stir in and what I also like to do is just add a little bit of the juice as well. So, a good tip for getting the, all the juice out of lemons, give them a little roll on your surface first, and that just gives them a bit of a juice. Right, then we'll get a cup. For some reason today, I can't find my lemon juicer either. So I'm just going to do it through my fingers, good old fashioned way, or even just give it a good squeeze, like so. And you want to get all your lemon juice out. Don't worry if you get a few of the pips in there, that's not a problem. You can always fish them out later. Or, like I said, if you want to, squeeze it through your fingers like that, and you'll catch the pips as you do it. Just like so. Now you're going to need the juice of all these later anyway, but at present, I'm just going to use a little bit. So we'll do the rest of that later. So I'm just going to put probably half a tablespoon of the juice into my mixture as well, just because I think it gives it that extra lemony kick. It's quite nice. So there we go, give that a mix round. And I've also just remembered, looking at my recipe, that I forgot my one teaspoon of baking powder as well. So I better get that in, hadn't I? Not to worry if you do forget things like this. You know, you can put it in later. Hasn't gone in the oven yet. Right, one teaspoon. Let's get my magic spoons. Here we go. That's it. That's my one teaspoon. Stick that in too. Give that a stir around. You know, things like that happen from time to time. You forget something. It's okay. None of us are perfect. So there you go. That's in there too. So everything should be in now. So what you now want to do is you want to get your tin. And you want to line it with your baking parchment. So let's get the baking parchment at the same time. So here's our baking parchment. Excuse the noise of the Jenga cupboard, everybody. That's what we call it in our household. One cupboard that's got everything in and it always goes AWOL. Right, so you want to get enough of your paper. And as we usually do, give it a good scrunch up. Like so. And you just pour your mixture in. Now, as you, as you can hear in the background, oven's whirring. We've got this one on 150 degrees C, so quite low. It's one of those long bake recipes again, but I find they turn out the best. go move it around in your tin make sure it gets all in the corners scrape in as much of the bowl as you can and 
and there you have it. Right, so that one needs to go in. And you need to bake this one for about an hour. So, in it goes. I'll just stick an hour on my trusty kitchen timer. There we go. And I shall check back with you shortly when it's out of the oven. Right guys, so our hour is up. I'm now about to get the lemon drizzle out of the oven. So normally I wouldn't show you this bit. I would wait till later, but it's important. As soon as you get it out of the oven and you've given it a poke just to check that it's cooked, is you want to pierce the top and go all the way through of your lemon drizzle like this, making little holes. Now I don't think this affects the appearance of it at all. I think it actually makes it look quite pretty. So we do this, then straight away you pour over your lemon juice. And once you've done that, you sprinkle on your demerara sugar, which obviously will stick to the lemon juice and give you this effect. Now all that lemon juice is gonna seep in and it will be absolutely lovely. Now I'll check back in in a few minutes when it's cooled down and I've got it onto a plate. Right guys, so here's my lemon drizzle all out of the oven and ready to show you. Mine normally turns out quite pale like that and I quite like it like that. So, hope you try it out, hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall see you back here for another video soon. Bye!